I want to start with an interesting and I think important story going on in the media world. And that, of course, is the latest uh, contretemps between Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens. For months, they've been going back and forth with each other since the October 7th uh, Hamas attacks and since the genocide in Gaza began after October 7th. Those two have been going at it. Shapiro and Owens had been friends. They had been colleagues. Ben Shapiro was shouting her out when she was wearing White Lives Matter t-shirts. She was showing love to Ben. Their colleagues on the Daily Wire, which is the conservative media platform that and media company that Ben Shapiro co-founded. Candace Owens, who was at Prager before that, and she's been at some other outlets before that, found a home at Daily Wire and has a very popular podcast, a very popular program. She has an extremely popular presence. But her and Ben started going at it. They became, I won't say enemies, but they became tense uh, when Candace Owens began to speak about the genocide in Gaza and actually talked about it in those terms. She talked about the fact that not only are Israeli lives valuable, but she had the audacity to say that Palestinian children who get killed in Gaza are also a tragedy. She also said that the idea that there are no Palestinian innocents, that there are no innocent Palestinian civilians, it, a comment that a Republican congressman made, she dismissed that as absurd. She didn't take a pro-Hamas position. She didn't even take a pro-Palestinian position, but she simply said that what the Israeli government is doing is problematic. She also, of course, is friends with Kanye West. She also has made comments that uh, riled up uh, Rabbi Shmuley, uh, which to me were just self-defense after Shmuley spent two years attacking her. But all that aside, she appeared on The Breakfast Club last week. And when Candace Owens appeared on The Breakfast Club last week, she talked about it a little bit. But she said, that, look, Ben Shapiro's not going to fire me or Ben Shapiro can't fire me, which is a fact. Um, next day, though, she did get fired from The Daily Wire. And at least the media outlets are reporting that. Variety reported that. The media I reported that. They said that she was fired because of concerns over her anti-Semitism. Now, it's possible it's more complex than that in terms of her departure. But the media narrative, what Daily Wire seems to have leaked to the press, what press accounts are saying is that Candace Owens was fired. Anyway, uh, Candace has spoken very little about it. Uh, but... To date, Ben Shapiro hasn't said much, which is a reversal of what had been happening for weeks prior to that. Ben Shapiro had been the one getting caught dissing Candace Owens on, on uh, TikTok. Uh, she was uh, the one who had held her powder for the most part. She still hasn't really said anything negative about Ben Shapiro. Nevertheless, here's where they are. Well, Ben Shapiro appeared on an episode of Piers Morgan uh, yesterday. And when he appeared on the show... Peers asked her or asked him about Candace Owens. They talked about a lot of stuff. They talked about Israel and Palestine. They talked about Rabbi Shmuley. But at one point, the conversation turned to Candace Owens. And here is what Ben Shapiro said. You and your company have been at the center of a very uh, high profile one at the moment with Candace Owens, who's now left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Piers. At, at all? At all. You can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. Now, this is fascinating. Now, it's not particularly surprising that he would say he's not going to speak to it when companies depart, uh, especially when they fire people. They don't want to say, well, we fired her because of her beliefs on Israel-Palestine. They don't want to say we fired her because we didn't agree with her, because that smells like a lawsuit, especially if they fired her. Now, you might say, Mark, you're reading too much into this. He just said he didn't want to talk about it. Well, Ben Shapiro likes to talk about everything. He's one of those people who comes on TV. He's a guest, like me, who comes on and is pretty much an open book. They'll, they'll answer the questions. You may not agree with them, but they're going to answer the questions. Well, not so much this time. He took a very different position. But let's keep going, because Piers Morgan did his job and kept pressing. Can, can, I ask, can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no, I'm not, you can ask why <laughs> you don't want to say anything. Um, again, you can ask. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean I only, I'm only curious because I know what a, a staunch defender of free speech you are, and it would surprise me if it had been 
someone's opinions that would make you want to part company with them. However, contentious. I mean, su suffice it to say, the only thing I will say is what. Now, Piers Morgan is making an interesting and important point here. He's saying, he's saying quite clearly, look, you people, by you people, I mean Republicans, are often the advocates of free speech. When something racist is said, you say, well, it, I may not agree with it. I may not believe the same thing, but people have a right to say what they want to say. When there's Klan rallies, when there's marches, when there's Confederate statues, people always talk about the right to free speech. Even when free speech is not in debate, usually the Democrats usually liberals, usually progressives, usually radicals, are anybody remotely near the left, they're not arguing that you don't have a right to say this stuff. The question is, do you have a right to be held accountable for it? Do we have a right to public rebuke? Do we have a right to challenge you? Do we have a right to divest? Do we have a right to boycott? These are the kinds of questions that are asked. But and oftentimes the First Amendment is used as a kind of silver bullet by the right to defend all kinds of deplorable behavior. Oh, well, we have a right to say it. And when Republicans get fired from jobs, look at Jeffrey Lord at CNN who got fired for saying really, really racist stuff, invoking kind of Nazi language. A lot of Republicans, a lot of right wingers, a lot of evangelical Christian Republicans, a lot of Trumpers, all kinds of camps on the right said he has a right to say it. Shame on CNN for letting that person go. That was the argument, right? That was the argument. Just this week, just this week, MSNBC or NBC, I should say, um, fired Ronna McDaniel and who was a conservative voice, a, 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 a RNC chair, a former RNC chair uh, and someone who had held the water, carried the water for Donald Trump. Somebody who was seen as an election denier. MSNBC, excuse me, said we are hiring this person. The, the staff at MSNBC almost uniformly said we don't want her. We don't want anything to do with this person. Um, shame on y'all for hiring her. And NBC eventually fired her. And people on the right said, how dare you? There is free speech. People have a right to free speech. But then when Candace Owens started criticizing Israel, things changed. Things changed. Here's what the conversation continued. Here's how the conversation continued. But I've said all along with regard to Candace or with regard to any of our other hosts, I am not in hiring and firing position with The Daily Wire. I'm a co-founder of The Daily Wire. I'm a co-owner of The Daily Wire. I'm not actually in management. So <laughs> then Ben says, look, I'm not in the hiring and firing position. I didn't have anything to do with this. I can't get somebody fired. I'm, I, I'm the co-founder, yes. But I, I can't get somebody. Fired. Can you imagine somebody saying that with a straight face? Well, I don't own the company. I mean, I, I, I co-own the company. I'm a founder of the company. I helped start the company. And yet, do I own part of the company? Sure. Are the owners my friends? Absolutely. Am I the most powerful face on the network? No doubt about it. But I had nothing to do with the firing. Okay. Okay. What he's actually saying is, I didn't literally fire her. I didn't technically fire her, but my thoughts may have some influence here. My beliefs may have had some sway here. The day after she said, Ben Shapiro can't fire me, she got fired. Could be a coincidence, but either way, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's keep going, though, before we move on. Jeremy Boring and Caleb Robinson are in management positions with regard to Candace or anyone else. And as far as the free speech situation, what I will say is that no company has the obligation to literally pay anyone. The, the Daily Wire is a, is a publisher. It is not a platform. Uh, I've never called for Candace or anyone else, for that matter, to be banned from YouTube, to be banned from X, to be banned from any platform. That's a different story obviously when it comes to any publisher any publisher gets to make decisions about what it wishes to uh, what it wishes to purvey and not he's absolutely right if i got a company i don't have to have ben shapiro on ben shapiro doesn't have to have me on his company right if i'm a left wing outlet i don't need to have right wingers on if i'm a right wing company i don't need to have left wingers on sure he's absolutely right 
what I'm hearing him say, and again, this is just my analysis. I'm not presenting this as uh, a confirmed fact. This is not from a source. This is not a, a journalistic endeavor I'm about to engage in for the next 30 seconds. It's me making sense of it with good old fashioned common sense. What he's saying is, I'm not commenting on this because I don't want to get sued. But yeah, we didn't like what she said. We didn't agree with her on Israel Palestine, and she wouldn't stop coming after us. And so we let her go. And we don't have any duty to keep her. And he's right. He made an important distinction here between platforms and, and, and media companies. Yeah. People have a right to free speech in the world. They have a right to free speech in the in the public sphere. They got a right to free speech on Twitter. They got a right to free speech on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, but they ain't got a right to a job with me. If I don't rock with somebody or if somebody doesn't represent my interests and I formed this company to advance interests, life is hard. Wear a helmet, to quote Candace Owens. I mean, it's, I'm just not going to labour this, but one more point I would make is it's been reported extensively that the reason for her departure was because her comments have been perceived by people at the Daily Wire as anti-Semitic. Again, I'm I'm not going to comment on this, Pierce. Okay. So he was not going to say it was anti-Semitic because if he says it's anti-Semitic and then fires her, now they can have a legal battle where she just has to prove that she wasn't anti-Semitic to prove that he she was actually fired for having op you know cr uh, an, op an opposing opinion on Israel or on a political ma matter. I don't know who wins or loses that. I'll leave that to the lawyers, but I will tell you it's an interesting fight. And so for once, Ben Shapiro said, I'm not going to comment on it. He punted. That's interesting. But they know what they're dealing with. They're dealing with a very formidable opponent in Candace Owens, um, who I think will go on and have her own lane and her own media career. There's plenty of space for someone with her beliefs and her worldview, uh, particularly a black woman with those beliefs and worldview. Um, so I think she'll be just fine. But it is interesting that they didn't fire Candace Owens for saying white lives matter. They loved it. They didn't fire her when she stood up against trans folk. And when they told her how they made her, her comments made them feel trans folk and people from the LGBTQ community said how unsafe her comments made them feel, how it was a certain kind of violence. She said, life's tough, wear a helmet. She was applauded for. She's applauded for lots of stuff that much of the world or much of the country found objectionable, but not this.